Howdy, Howdy Ramblers. Ramblers. I'm Amber. And I'm Eric. And, and we're, we're Ramblin' Bears. Bears. And this is Bear Bulletin number three. Yeah, it's a show where we root around in the trash bins of the internet and try to bring you the very tastiest bits of nature and outdoor and environment news. Uh, freshness not guaranteed. And uh, to get right to it, we've got a lot of national parks this time. And we all know that national parks are a good investment, but how good? Well, a recent peer-reviewed study found that for only $2.7 in spending, which sounds like a lot but is a tiny bit of the federal budget, the national parks actually generated $31 billion in economic activity and other, over 250,000 jobs. In my opinion, this is a perfect example of how a small upfront investment can really blossom into uh, something that turns out to be an economic gold mine. And it's also a reminder that not everything that we spend public money on can be directly measured on the budget's bottom line, since this happens down the road. And So it's something that's important to remember as national parks, local parks, state parks, all over the place face increasing budget scrutiny. We have an update on Journey the Wolf. A couple bulletins back, I told you about a wolf that came into California from Oregon that was part of a preservation reintroduction uh, group of wolves. Well, it looks like it went back into Oregon for a week and then came back to California. Uh, and so we really think that this is important because it journeys kind of like the highlights of the importance of continued you know, continued wilderness uh, of, or wildlife corridors, so they call them, where the, the wolf ventures in and uh, re-explores California. Grand Canyon National Park has taken a huge step in uh, banning bottled water sales. It's a bit of a controversial move, but it attempts to address what is the biggest source of litter in the park and actually accounts for 30% of the park's waste stream, if you can believe that. Uh, late last year, there was a delay in implementation. It actually raised a few eyebrows since it coincided with a complaint from the Coca-Cola Corporation. Uh, but the officials say they actually were doing due diligence around visitor safety, which actually makes a lot of sense since dehydration uh, and uh, heat exhaustion are huge problems, especially for unprepared hikers. But what they've actually done is put in numerous bottle filling stations all around the park uh, so that you can fill a reusable water bottle. And I really think this is a win-win. Yeah. I don't really see any upside to bottled water. Go get yourself a nice reusable bottle right now and just never look back. Yeah, hey, they even sell them at the park, right? The next update I have is uh, also kind of in the animal news. A couple bulletins back, I talked about how the pythons in Florida were kind of getting out of control and eating a lot of the uh, mammals, small mammals in the area. So the National Park Service and Florida Fish and Wildlife Con Conservation Commission s put together this program where you can actually, you know, if you spot a snake, you can call it in. Um, and they have it kind of marketed right now at truck drivers and people that make a lot of deliveries that are on the road a lot because these snakes like warm pavement. So there's actually a phone number you can call if you pass one on the road. Call 1-888-I've-GOT-IT. I'll put it right here on the screen. 1-888-I've-GOT-IT. And you can report one. Uh, you can also actually take a class in invasive reptile recognition. So no, that sounds fun. So if you want to, uh, <laughs> you know, be able to know exactly what kind of snake you're seeing, you can report even more detail, which is uh, kind of fun. Well, in ocean news, uh, a study found that some corals may actually respond uh, better to warming than previously thought. Uh, we, we know that pollution, acidity, and especially warm temperatures can cause a phenomenon called coral bleaching, where coral polyps actually expel their symbiotic algae, and they sort of shrivel up, lose their color, turn stark white, and if it happens long enough, they can die. Um, so this study looked at sites around Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, and... Uh, in 2010 which was a very warm year for these corals and they exhibited some unprecedented differences between the different study locations to what they previously thought was a very uniform uh, phenomenon so some areas saw little damage to these fast-growing branching corals which are actually normally the ones that get the most damaged it's inconclusive there's a lot more research needed but there may be a silver lining basically they think that some of these areas that were very stressed in a huge event in 1998 which actually saw coral bleaching affect 16 percent of the world's corals wow. um, they think some of these corals that were stressed in 1998 now responded better in 2010 and that may also mean that corals that are in more variable climates are more resilient uh, than corals in uh, very stable climates um, but there's a lot more to learn there. 
Well, the last two stories that we have are about rescue and are good, I guess, stories that have happy endings. Uh, the first one is about a backpacker who actually got lost in the woods. She was a very spirited character. She actually had her cat with her and she decided to go off trail and just start backpacking and she got lost and was actually in the woods for three and a half weeks. Uh, she ended up running out of water and food and so they just scrounged. They said her cat hunted and <laughs> they... Uh, just drank water in the springs that they found until finally after someone noticed her car had been parked there for a really long time, someone sent rescue out and she was actually only found about a mile away from the road, if you can even imagine. So she made it out alive and it, they said that her cat actually looked in a better shape than she did. So good news there. Uh, the other story I have about a rescue is um, actually about a Yosemite ranger who was on his way to work one morning when someone flagged him down off the road and uh, it turned out a car had rolled over, was in flames off the side of the road, and he went down and rescued them. And this car wasn't just on fire. It had over like 100 gallons of gasoline, which made it even more dangerous. It actually started a small brush fire. But uh, his name was uh, Ranger James, James Daniel Abe, I believe. He may not have even been on duty yet. It sounded like he was driving to work. So the uh, Department of Interior actually gave him the Valor Award. And so that's kind of a high honor and pretty exciting. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's all good news. Well, that about wraps it up for this Bear Bulletins. All these stories are down below in the description. If there's any updates, we'll put them there too. Yep, and if you have any comments or stories, you can always leave comments below, and you can also hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. It's Ramblin' Bears, uh, all one long word. Uh, so if you think we nailed it, then uh, thumbs up or share it with your friends. Yep, and uh, check out some of the recent videos we've done. We have one on a foil pack that we did for a quick camp cooking. It wasn't really quick, but it was camp cooking. Uh, easy. And then we also have another video somewhere over here about MSR reactor gear review that we did. So if you're interested in checking out a new piece of gear where you can boil water real quick, check out that video. We got a SF uh, beer week recap still on the way. I know we promised it last time, but it's coming. It's a lot of editing and a Yosemite <laughs> uh, travel log coming soon. So if you want to see all that and more, make sure and subscribe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much for now. Until, Until next, next time, time ramble, ramble on. on.